Sorting through the many perspectives takes work. The seemingly never-ending opinions can get noisy. But what if we choose to change our vantage point? Think bigger. Dig deeper. Change the dialogue. Discovering the truth above it all. It's time to elevate the conversation. Hey, BC Boom, it's Good Karma, and I want to thank you so much for joining us on today. Listen, we're kicking off a new series called Elevate. Before we go forward, I need you to get your notepads, tablets, whatever you use to take notes, because this series, Elevate, is going to be something that's going to help you tremendously. This series is all about raising the bar in our conversations about political tension. We all know that in just a few days, we're going to have a new president. Right now, the political tension in our country is at an all time high. You're concerned as a high school student, your generation is concerned. I'm concerned about how the decisions that are made today, how those decisions are going to affect our future how those decisions are going to affect our tomorrow. And it's so easy to get caught up in the noise, the chaos uh, uh, as to what's going on. You have people arguing and debating about who's deserving of a particular position. They're debating about certain policies that uh, are on the table right now. Uh, they're de debating about certain referendums that are on the table right now. But in this series, Elevate, I love this series because it kind of helps us put things back into perspective. Uh, we're going to be focusing on what really matters. And I'm going to tell you, it's nothing deep at all. What really matters at the end of the day, after we have voted, some of you that may be a, of age to vote, uh, after we have made our own unique decisions based off of what we hold true to our uh, standard of beliefs, at the end of the day, the only thing that is going to matter is that we follow the way of Jesus. I know you're like, whoa, that's all that matters? Yeah. Yeah, are we really following the way of Jesus? That's what we really want to push at the end of the day. Are we following the way of Jesus? Because following the way of Jesus is bigger than any policy that can ever be implemented, okay? And so we have to figure out a way, especially as believers. My God, this is hard. This is tough. I get it. Because I, I get it. I'm not going to go into any details. But... We got to figure out a way how to have meaningful conversations without arguing, <laughs> without arguing, without falling out as it relates to the political climate. We got to have these conversations, even if we don't see it eye to eye with others. Uh, but at the end of the day, making sure that what's most important is that we're following Jesus. So we're going to tune into our uh, ministry partner who's going to help us all. I'm included in this number. But I will say this. If you have not voted and you're of age to vote, do your research and make sure you get to the poll. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Let's go. Get your Bibles. Let's go. important question for you. How many of you love yelling cannonball and then jumping into the water? I'm right there with you. I wish I could make a big enough splash to even reach the people sitting beside the pool. You know, the people who aren't even trying to get wet. What we're going to talk about today is going to be a little bit like that. We're going to jump straight into the deep end regarding a conversation that isn't easily had, but so many people feel tension about politics. And what a good time to talk about it since this year, elections are taking place all over the world. We are raising the bar for conversations about political tension. So let's dive right in. 
Here's what it's like for me. Every time an election rolls around, my community is filled with signs on street corners promoting a candidate for some public office. And every time, my kids will read the signs and ask me the taboo question. Who are you voting for, mom? Since I can't break down the candidate's political agenda to my little kids, I normally say, I'm not sure yet. But what I secretly know is true is that if I tell my kids who I'm voting for, there's a chance they'll tell their friend at school. And if they tell their friend at school, then their friend at school will tell their parents. And if their friend's parents disagree with my opinion, it could get a little awkward at the ball field later that week. Why? Because more than almost any other topic, politics create judgments. We build judgments of who people are simply by how and for whom they cast their vote, which is why politics have become taboo. They generate so much tension. Now, tension exists in our society and our culture all the time. People disagree over a ton of things, like is a hot dog a sandwich or a taco? LeBron James or Michael Jordan? Minecraft or Fortnite? But political tension is a different category altogether. Rather than just being a simple disagreement, the tension about politics often grows into something negative towards the other side, towards another person, and can even result in hostility between two people or groups. We choose divided political sides on things like who should be president, immigration, equality, economy, and some issues that seem to be so divisive that to merely mention them would cause emotions to rise, maybe even in you. It's no secret that political tension divides all types of people. It can drive a wedge between family members and best friends, or even people of the same faith. And we've all seen how wild it can get when people bring up politics during the holidays. Wanna ruin a fun family gathering? Ask everyone at the table who they are going to vote for and why. Now, let's be clear. The fact that in some countries, people are able to vote for a candidate in policies is an incredible privilege. Since the right to vote is such an honor, people can often be incredibly passionate about the topic, and that's understandable. But the constant tension and debate around politics can often feel like a game no one can win. So, how do we approach conversations about politics and policies in the wisest way? It all comes down to a choice. Will I choose a position regarding an issue over a person on the other side? And when you are a Jesus follower, that choice becomes even more important. Jesus himself lived in the middle of constant political tension, placed between the oppression of the Roman Empire on one side and the religious power of the Jewish temple on the other. Jesus navigated life alongside people that rarely lived in total agreement. And he addressed how to live well inside this ideological hurricane that politics can create. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 41, during Jesus' message on how to live the best life, Jesus says this, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. This wasn't Jesus trying to help people get their steps in. He was addressing how to deal with political tension. The people listening to Jesus knew that he was addressing a Roman policy declaring that any Roman soldier at any time could demand and force someone to carry his gear for him for one mile. A Roman soldier's gear was heavy. In fact, some people believe it could have been up in the range of 80 to 100 pounds. I can't imagine how it would have felt physically and emotionally to be required to carry a Roman soldier's gear. And Jesus cuts through the inflamed emotions of the political policy to teach his followers that you should show compassion to those who oppose you, to love your enemies. Through every example of Jesus's life and his ministry, we find a consistent thread. Jesus always chose to value the person over the policy. Mark captures another notable example of this where Jesus places the dignity, value, and well-being of people above rules and policy. A group of people were arguing about harvesting grain on the Sabbath which was a commanded day of rest according to the Jewish law. Some religious leaders were accusing Jesus' disciples of breaking the rules when Jesus said this. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath. The religious leaders were caught up in the rules and missed the purpose of why the rules existed to help people. For Jesus, it's people over everything. More important than a policy, a party, a side, or a stance. Jesus constantly chose to value people first. From his enemies to his followers, it was always 
people. And where we really see Jesus lead the way is how he interacted with those that were oppressed by society or circumstance. In John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, we see an ancient story of a woman caught breaking a law. At that time, their law and policy demanded that she be publicly humiliated, shamed, and then executed. But Jesus sends the crowds away. He chose the dignity and humanity of this woman by showing her grace and love even though she was exposed and guilty. Then Jesus helps her to her feet and tells her to go and sin no more. And thankfully, Jesus is saying the same thing to you and to me every time we're guilty in our sin, which put simply, is anything less than what God says is best. Thankfully, Jesus chooses us even when we've sinned. The entire Bible is one big story of God loving, choosing, and rescuing his people. And that's what Jesus showed us time and time again. When argumentative religious leaders demanded Jesus take a side, Jesus chose to love people more than a policy. When you look at Jesus, this becomes abundantly clear. The way of Jesus means people are more important than policy, which leaves us with a big question. How do you and I follow Jesus and navigate political tension? I'm so glad you asked. Perhaps the best place to start is by asking yourself a few questions. Do you see the person on the other side of your view as sacred? Do you see that person as an image bearer of God with worth and dignity? Do you view that person with reverence and treat them with incredible respect and care. Wait for it, regardless of their political persuasion, party, or stance? Okay, so think about this tension. Group A and Group B. And they have nothing in common, but the reality is every single person in both of these groups is made in the image of God which means we're created to reflect what God is like to the world. That includes the people you disagree with, you don't like, and who look, act, or believe differently than you. So that means if you disagree with them, you can still see them as someone made in the image of God. Or if you disagree with them, you can also see them as someone made in the image of God. For Jesus, it was always about valuing people even those he disagreed with. So if we want to follow Jesus and navigate political tension, when we interact with someone, whether they believe the same thing as us or not, we are called to show them the same love and grace that Jesus shows us. The way of Jesus means people are more important than policy. It may not always be easy to choose, but it will always leave a lasting impact, both on the person on the other side of your beliefs and on you. And if you're here and you don't really care that much about political stuff, you'll still have people that you disagree with for some other reason. And you too can see those people as image bearers with complete worth and dignity. That's the way of Jesus, treating people like they're sacred. And that's what we can do too. Well, hey, BC Boom, it's good Carmen. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I know this was probably a tough lesson, but hey, every day can't be peaches and cream. Sometimes we really, really got to deal with some real tough issues um, so that we can move forward and be better, be all that Christ has us to be. So listen, I want you to, if you have not done so, follow along in the Bible reading um, app at the Elevate Plan to your repertoire this week. And just, it, it's going to help even as the election is coming up, to just stay focused um, and not get distracted by a whole lot of other things that are going on. Um, you know you can always call us here at the church at 404-289-3751 if you need prayer. Um, but before we leave here today, I'm actually going to just say a simple prayer uh, with you. Wherever you're at, could you just pray with us? Dear God, we thank you for just this opportunity to grow um, as believers to grow more in your word and in the knowledge of who you are and our responsibility as believers, Lord. And I so I thank you that even in the middle of this political tension that we're living in, God, I thank you that um, you can help us because you value people over policy. And so I thank you that we would follow your example, God. I thank you that we'll follow your example. We will seek understanding. Um, and we will also show love even when we disagree. 
that may be a hard place to be in for many of us, but God, we're looking to you to help us navigate this season, Lord. And I'm asking God that you give us the wisdom that to have meaningful conversations that will reflect your heart and also give us the courage to stand up for what's right in a way that honors you, Lord. Help us, God. Uh, lead us and guide us to be peacemakers and the bridge builders, Lord, um, in our schools, in our homes, in our communities. And we give your name all honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you, BC Boom. We love you. We'll see you next week. Same station, same channel.